Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Today we are going to be doing something a little different compared to the past videos I've been releasing. Today we will be diving into the GraphQL API of Facebook and uh, also going through some more intermediate advanced stuff of the network tab that will be useful for our little script slash program here in the end okay so um, as you can see i'm in my editor right now and i'm in an empty project so i'm just gonna get up and running by writing npm init and go through the stuff and uh, i'm gonna create an index.js file here and get started okay so before we start writing any code, I want to go to Facebook's Marketplace website to uh, have a quick peep. So if we go to Chrome Incognito here and start typing in facebook.com and we can do slash marketplace here. And that's going to open up the marketplace which looks a little funny <laughs> on my screen. Anyway, over here I have the network tab open. And since I have the network tab open, as I loaded this page, I got a sponge of stuff in here. Okay. And um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. There's some images, there's some scripts, some stuff. So first of all, to get a good overview of what's going on, I want to click XHR here. So I'm only getting uh, the Ajax calls, the, the, the API stuff basically. Okay. Now um, the uh, GraphQL API of Facebook, oh, first of all, uh, GraphQL is the uh, type of API that Facebook is using on their front end to grab data. Okay. And as you can see, when I hover over here, they are, it's accessing the same uh, address here to get some, some data back. Okay. And uh, we're going to explore how we can actually grab some data ourselves here. Okay. So let's start out by clearing here and then go to the search field and then search something could be, let's say a table. Okay. Now, after I click table, that launched a bunch of requests here. So let's uh, minimize this part a little bit so we get a better overview of the network tab. So we have a bunch of GraphQL stuff here. So let's just check the first one. And uh, you can see I have currently my active tab open here response. And that is to get a quick overview of what data we're actually getting. Here we're just getting some error stuff. Let's check the next one. Here we have some type head suggestions, search suggestions. Okay, not good, interesting, not interesting either. Um, by the way, these GraphQL requests coming in here are from when I started typing in the field down here, okay? Those are not very cool because we actually want to be grabbing some items, some, some real data. So let's go down here, down here. Oh, there's some error again. Oh, here, here we're getting to some stuff. We can see we have some marketplace listing category ID, some creation time, some price. This is the stuff we're looking for. Okay, so by looking through the response, we can actually, we can figure out what these different API calls are generating. Okay, and um, in my little uh, note project here, I'm interested in getting some data. So how can I actually get this data in my program? Well, we can do something very nifty here. Uh, if you go to the headers, we can see the URL, the method. But if we scroll down, we have a request header section here where we can see all the different headers being sent. And if you scroll down, we have the form data. This is the body of the request. 
there's a bunch of stuff here and at but at the very bottom we have variables variables here where we get some useful information so we have a commerce search sort by best match so this is like a filter we have a price lower bound zero uh, we also have an upper bound here and uh, yeah we also have some location id and some cool stuff so this is um, some stuff that's pretty readable if we uh, take this we can go to adjacent format aside and even get a clearer overview of what's actually stored in here so so far i think i went through most of it but here we get an even nicer look of the data we are sending to our api okay all right so at this point you're probably thinking hmm this is a lot of stuff if i'm going to replicate this api call it's going to take a while now what we can do here which is pretty cool is we can right click here and then click copy or hover over copy and then choose the option copy as fetch and now we can go back into our node program so since we are not in the browser when we are inside node we need to install a package here so the package i'm going to add is node fetch which is basically a um, way of um, getting the same API as in the browser using the fetch API uh, in node. So instead of using Axios or using the request um, module for node, I would rather go with fetch because I'm used to fetch on the front end in the browser. So I would like to use that same API in uh, Node. And plus we get that added bonus that we can now use that cool little trick here. So let's start off by requiring Node Fetch. Okay, that's cool. Now what we can do is just to copy paste and we get a if you save the document, if you have a formatter on, it's gonna look a little neater. So this is kinda all the stuff we just saw in Chrome, kinda. Not all of it is copied over, but the important stuff, all right? So let me create a function where we call this fetch. And let's just call it fetch data for now. So since we are doing some API stuff, we need to make sure that this function is asynchronous by adding the asynchronous keyword there. So since we are using the fetch API, first we need to await the initial fetch. That gives us back a response that we can also call await on. So await response and since the GraphQL API of Facebook is using JSON. We can call JSON on that response and then get some, some data out. And for now, I'm just gonna log it to see if we are getting the same data as we did before. Okay, so if we save that and just call fetch data here at the bottom, let's see if we are getting what we want. Oh. Yeah, this couldn't remember the command for our terminal. Okay, so let's run node index.js. And then let's have a look at the data. So it seems like we're getting some data back. We're getting a data object with a nested viewer object. And there's some different things in here, including marketplace search. Now, what is very cool is we can go back to our Chrome here and have a look at the preview tab now. Because in the preview tab, we can get our a nice little overview of how the data looks in the, the format we just got in the console here. 
So we had that data, right? And we also had that viewer and that marketplace search. If we go back, um, to the last page, we can see we have data, we have viewer, we have marketplace search here. Okay. So we are kind of getting this stuff. Now we can dig deeper down here and see we get marketplace search. We also get feed units and there are an array here called edges. And now we're getting a bunch of objects here. And inside each object is a node and inside this node, there's a listing object. And here are the information we are basically looking for. So going into the preview tab, we can easily get a good overview of the actual stuff that we get back from the API. Uh, same, we could also go into the response here, but uh, I like digging into the preview to, um, how do you say, trying to go down the tree and how do you say, unfold, <laughs> unfold the stuff I want to have a look at. Okay. So that's the preview tab. Very useful. So we let's go back to our program here. Okay. So we have this market place search and some feed units and on underneath that we had another object. Now let's try to loop over our results and print out the title, for example. Okay. So let's make a loop here. So it was marketplace search feed units. And then underneath that we had an object and uh, we can see that underneath feed units, we have edges here. Okay. And that, that edges is an array. So that's the one we want to be looping over. So we can do that edges here. And then we can lock stuff. So edge. Now, what is the next object in this tree? Well, if you go back, we can see that each edge has a node. And inside node, we have the listing. Okay. So edge dot node dot listing. And we want the title, right? Oh, so let's see where's the title it seems to be this one marketplace listing title. All right, put that in there. Let's run our program and then outcome in this log. Okay, there seems to be a small issue here and uh, I forgot something and that is I called this one data, All right? But this object actually has a outer um, property called data. So it's actually data.data. To verify that, we can see up here that, yeah, here it is, data, okay? So if we save that and run it again, we are getting our different items here. Okay. And, uh, yeah, that was pretty easy to set up. We just went to Facebook's website, open up the network tab and then copied that, um, fetch into our into our program here. And now we have some items and we can do whatever we want with those. That's up to you. Okay. Um, yeah, this was pretty much all I want to show you. Just uh, a neat little trick and kind of a overview of how the GraphQL API works for, for Facebook. If you just want to grab um, some simple items, 
uh, using a um, specific search keyword. Uh, if you want to change some some variables, you can reformat this body here. So you can see this body is pretty long and unreadable, but at one at somewhere in here, it is like um, if we go back to Chrome actually and back to the headers and scroll down, we can see there is a um, Uh, commerce search bar search sort by here we can change this value to something else if we want maybe the latest items or the cheapest items and stuff like this so we can actually easily change stuff around to get maybe a different result okay all right that was just a few neat little tricks there and uh, hopefully you learned something see you guys in the next video